Welcome everybody. I'm Kelly Thompson and I'm a leadership coach and I have another special guest with me today and I am so excited. I have Denise Perkins with me and Denise is going to give all of you so much wisdom. Denise is a realtor and she's also just started another business because that's what women do. One isn't enough. Like we're that amazing where we can run multiple things at once to coach women who have a desire to be in real estate. And you know what, the thing that I love about Denise is that she embodies one of my favorite quotes by one of my favorite authors named Dan Pink. And he says, organizations need talented people more than talented people need organizations. And Denise and I were just talking about how women who are smart and talented don't need an organization to be successful. And like she's gonna talk about here in a little bit, there are so many opportunities where you can go out on your own and have a thriving business and all the things. So I am going to welcome Denise. Denise, do you just want to tell everybody all the things? So I want them to know, what do you do? Talk about your family. Tell us what your cat's name is in the background. All the things. <laughs> what do we need to know? <laughs> well, first, most importantly, this is Betty behind me. Betty, and all right. Come in and out. Um, I'm Denise Perkins, and I live in the Seattle area, and I'm um, in a small town called Redmond. Not small, actually, but, um, and I am a mom of three kids. I have um, Will, my youngest, Anna, my middle, and Kate is my oldest at 11. So I have 11, 9, and 8. Yeah, 8, 8, and 8, and um nine. So yep. that's all cool. the moms just did the math and were like, Oh my God, you're pregnant four straight years. All part of my story. Um, yep. So and a, an amazing husband who's great and supportive. Um, and uh, I have been a realtor now for the last 10 years, 10 years in October. And um, I also prior to that was um, had my own marketing and events company. And, and in between there, I sold trinkets and trash and um, yeah, promotional merchandise. <laughs> and then after that, I sold hair dryers. Oh I my worked, gosh. Yeah, I worked for Con Air. I sold curling irons and hair dryers. So I got the hookup if you guys ever need anything. Oh my, okay. So everybody is already like, okay, I need to know all of the things. So <laughs> yes, I yes. love this. And so I want you to tell us just a little bit, because I think a lot of the women um, that I talk to, whether they realize it or not, a lot of them have a longing, I think sometimes to either, what would it be like if I went out on my own? Or what would it be like if I left corporate America? So do you wanna talk a little bit about kind of what made you decide to leave working for someone else? And how did you have the confidence to make that leap? Like, and why real estate? Just say more about that. Yeah, so um, my first leap though, really I got, um, when I was in my late twenties, um, I started my marketing company and I got laid off. And, but prior to that, I knew that I wanted to do it on my own. I don't know why or how I think it's just in me to, to not work for other people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I tried it. Didn't, yeah. didn't work out. Try, I tried it again. Still didn't work out. So I, I just, I just kind of dug in and did the research and tried to figure it out. And I'm um, just, knew that based on the people that I worked with that I could do what they were doing. Um, <laughs> and then um, I got, I had my, my marketing and events company, got married, decided I needed a real job to get us to have a salary. Yeah. Uh, and you know, we were going to start having a family and it just felt safer again. Um, so I went back and worked. That's when I sold, you know, I started going into sales because I felt like that had a little bit more flexibility. And that's what I really craved and loved about being an entrepreneur is being able to control my own schedule. Mm -hmm. Um, and so did that. And then, um, after working for a sales company that was so, uh, numbers driven spreadsheets, not my thing. I'm a people person. I needed to be, if I was going to be in sales, I needed to connect with people. It's like one of my core values is connection. So, um, I had a friend who was in the business and she encouraged me to do it. And she said, you'd be great. And she, she and I started as business partners and I had the confidence at that time because I knew I was going to be working with her who had been awesome. in the business for a while. So that was, 
that was what gave me that, that boost at that time. Yeah. I uh, love that. Okay. So I want to dig into that. Yeah. So how, cause I think that there's an important distinction and you, you kind of touched on it already a little bit. You knew that you were unhappy and you're like, dang, I'm doing spreadsheets and this sort of thing. How did you, cause a lot of people though would say, oh, I have a small, I have, a, I have small children. I have a family. I need to provide. I just need to tough it out. Right. I mean, I'm sure that like a lot of us have kind of thought that. Yeah. But what in your being was like your never again moment? You're like, I am not like, this is just not worth it. And I got to go. Like, how did you know that you needed to do something different? I, I hated what I was doing. I mean, and to me that was, I was, well, and I was, I was traveling a lot and I had small children. Yeah. Um, and it, and my, <laughs> it might've been my never again moment after I came back after my first child, I still had the same workload, still had the same demands. Um, I, th the company I was working for was, they were just, they were slave drivers and, and I would be driving in my car from meeting to meeting pumping while I was driving. Yeah. And then the other never again moment <laughs> was when I was getting ready to go to a meeting. I had to pump before the meeting. I was in a bathroom stall pumping and I dropped my milk on the floor. Oh, oh right. Like we all know I was like devastated and you know, I'm scrambling. I'm supposed to be looking nice. Cause I'm about ready to go meet a, you know, a, a high, uh, level account. Yeah. I've got to talk numbers. I've got to have my shit together. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it was no fun. And I think whether we have children or not, like we can all empathize with that moment yeah. because whether we're spilling our breast milk on the floor, our baby's bottled milk on the floor or our own food on the floor, because we're trying to eat in the bathroom. Right. It's just like, to anybody like that's just like oh my gosh okay yeah. and then the second thing you said and i think this is so important and i think we often um overlook this you said one of the things that kept me confident when i left was i knew i'd have a partner and i yeah. think sometimes when we go out on our own or we're gonna take a brave next step or a leap i think and i don't know if it's an ego thing i think sometimes i think we think i gotta muscle through this i gotta do it all by myself but what you said is so critical. We really need help and we're not meant to do this alone. So say more about how important that help was and how did you know that you'd found the right help or the right partner? Well, it, interestingly enough, we ended up not being partners for very long. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> it happens. It's fine because on a daily basis, as I progressed in my career as a realtor, I was grateful to her. We didn't, that even though we didn't end up together, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> she got me to do it. Like if it weren't for her and me knowing, oh, okay, well I can do real estate now because I'll have a business partner. If it weren't for her, I, I you know, would I have done it? Likely not. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so having that, that, that push, however it was, was super helpful to me. Um, and, and knowing that I also was working for a really great company um and doing my research to figure out what and she was already there but i knew I, it, the brokerage i work for is windermere incredibly supportive and and a great company that supports their agents and teaches them and makes them great agents i knew that i had that backing of that that brokerage and 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 i still get to work for myself so it's I still have my own business and i'm still you know responsible for for my own time and all that kind of stuff Awesome. Okay. I've got two questions for you. Okay. I want to talk about who you surround yourself with. Cause I think that's uh -huh. so important. So I want to come back to that. So but first, like, be, since we're kind of just talking about, you know, just the confidence to do some of these things, how would you define confidence? Like in your own words, like, what does that mean to you? And I was journaling about that the other day. Thank you to you. Um, and I decided that it's, it's being comfortable in my own skin and being happy with the decisions I've made, the choices I've made and trusting those decisions and trusting that I've got my back mm -hmm. and that, um, 
I don't want to compare myself to anyone else because I am me. I am my own unique person. I have my own unique gifts to give. And so to me, that's confidence. That's amazing. How do you stay out of that comparison game? I oh. can just imagine as an entrepreneur and especially as a realtor, yeah. being in a very public eye, especially yeah. now, yeah. I imagine it's quite tempting to just kind of want to conform to what other people are doing. So how do you keep confident without conforming and comparing? Say more about that. Um, again, it's, it's going back to, to, to my listening to myself and going back to why I do what I do, who I do it for, my people, my, my family, um, and just trying to really be true to myself. And, and, and the second I do start to compare, just trying to, to kind of snap myself out of it. Um, just again, so who I surround myself with, that really goes, goes back to it. Um, and, um, having my, my little rituals and my routines that I have to do for myself every single day and practicing that, that mindfulness and being, and, and, and where my mindset has to be. Cause I go, I go down that comparison rabbit hole all the time. So yes. So it's, a struggle. About that. Yeah, it's a struggle. Yeah. I want to hear more about like your environment. So how I call it in my practice is I call it, how are you maintaining your sacred spaces? Yeah. Now, I define sacred spaces as like your morning practices, right? Yeah. It's like when you wake up, what is the first intake of information that you get, that you give yourself, right? So you talked a little bit about that, but sacred spaces are also who you work with, which, you know, what you allow to bring in your home, what you allow to pop up on your social media feeds, the people you affiliate yourself with. So I would love to hear more about how you've built some sacred spaces to help really keep you moving forward confidently. Yeah. So for sure, my sacred space is my first thing in my morning practice. And, um, I'm, I'm not a, a good person <laughs> if I don't have my morning practice. <laughs> I told my husband, I said, when I met him, so I've obviously only been married for two years. And like one of the first things I said, I said, listen, I said, if I don't get my hour in the morning, I am not fit for human consumption. Yeah. Like, yeah. End of story. And that now everybody just knows. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's so true. And same at my house. And they, and I, so I meditate. That's the first thing I do is I meditate five minutes, 20 minutes, depending on, you know, when I happen to get up that morning. Um, and just, just be, and then I journal. Um, and, um, it's, it's, you know, my therapy, it's my, it's, it's just my gift to myself, right? Like, and, and it, it sets me for my day. I try to set intentions. And then of course I, my grad, my gratitudes, tell, you know, I'm so grateful for so much in my life. And so that, that's my biggest sacred space. And, and these days that sacred space is even more sacred and harder to come by. So, um, but in, in general, you know, having that time is great. Um, other, mm, and, and you asked like other sake. Yeah. Another. And then how else, like, cause you just talked about choosing to be around the right people. Right, right, That's right. also our sacred space. So allowing yeah. what we want into our news yeah. feed, the people we work with. Go, yeah. Yeah. Go yeah thank you. <laughs> um, uh, I have a, a business coach and that has been one of my mm -hmm. great, another great gift to myself because it has allowed me to surround myself by amazing women that inspire me, lift me up, push me. Um, and I honestly do not know where I would be without that group. Um, it's, it's just, it is the most, one of the most important things in my life for sure. Um, I have, I also, so I have two different kinds of groups. I have my realtor group, which are really amazing, um, high producing successful realtors um, happen to be all women. Um, <laughs> and then my, and then my other, my other business, um, coaching group, um, that is just, yeah, my life bled. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's amazing. And I think that's so important. And one of the things I talk about a lot is, you know, men have always had a room Yeah, because you know what, they kind of, you know, built the rules 
or they've been in corporate America, they've been in the boardrooms and, you know, or they've established a lot of the rules, right? And so I think it's so important for women to create their own room and do it with people who have the same goals that they have, are confident enough in themselves that there's not going to be comparison, but we're there with the attitude to help, to inspire. Yes. And when we share the same values, it's so important. And so I love that you're that conscious of creating that support network. Yeah, it is. It is. It's definitely, I feel very important for all women to have. Um, it, it helps to breed your success, no matter what that looks like. Right. So yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So what advice? Now, I know that you're in an industry that's been impacted by COVID. So I would love to hear, you know, what have you learned? And maybe it's something you're still trying to figure it out. I don't expect that you have all the answers, but you know, right. how have you really kind of kept your confidence and kept moving through during all of these challenges? Well, fortunately for me, it, it's been a great opportunity to kind of connect with people. And I really, it's really, really important to me that my real estate business is built on relationships. I don't, you know, I, I have a relationship based business. I um, connect with my clients on a day, weekly basis, um, phone calls and writing notes. And so really it's been a great opportunity to do that. How, you know, making calls and seeing, checking in on people and seeing how they are. Um, I, I am fortunate to live in an area that our, our real estate market is, is, is still thriving. Um, we've made adjustments and tweaks for everybody to stay safe. Um, and, and yet we're, you know, we, we still have, it's still a seller's market. There's still, you know, a lot of buyers out there. Um, so that's been great as far as that part of my career. Um, and then with coaching, um, other women, um, in my mama's real estate Academy, it's, it's another opportunity to connect, to, you know, kind of have that tribe to help each other along to, to rise up and just, you know, how, how can we help each other through this time? Cause we're all struggling. It's, you know, when you're home all day long with all your people, it's, I mean, it's, no, it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. So, um, but I love one of the things though, that you're insinuating, you're not really saying it, but you are saying it. It seems like you really relied on your values to help you through this time. And the reason why I say that is because I kept hearing you say again and again, even amidst all the chaos and all the uncertainty and all of this, you relied on your core value of connection. Yeah. To help carry you through. And so what other core values do you have? I'm super curious. And how yeah. have those helped you, if at all? Um, humor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> one of my number one core values. <laughs> yeah. So how is it, how has that shown up for you? And I think this is so important. I think sometimes like when, when shit hits the fan, like, it's like, oh my gosh, what do I do? And I think it is important to grieve and feel all the feelings. And at the end of the day, like when we know our values, mm -hmm. they can just provide so much clarity and even just some meaning to all of this. Okay. So say yeah. more about how you've used humor in your other ones. Well, um, I mean, I'm just kind of a goofy person and I've just been trying to keep my ki my kids laughing and doing fun activities. And quite honestly, my husband and I, instead of watching the news, we've been watching like stand up comedians, yeah, like Netflix. And so anytime we're getting too serious, I'm like, let's just watch like, you know, some old office episodes or, you know, yeah. Yeah. so that's been, you know, great and important. Um, my, some of my other core values are um, helpfulness. So mm -hmm. again, an opportunity to be helpful to people, providing item, uh, things of value, um, information on, you know, staying stay safe. Um, and, and for me, being helpful in helping people learn about real estate, what's going on in the real estate market, telling them the actual facts about real estate, helping my, mom, my mama's and mama's real estate academy, you know, staying on track, planting our seeds so that when this is over, we know that we're going to come out of the other side. Okay. So yeah, my core values are, you know, connection, helpfulness, and being silly. <laughs> <laughs> my family, I and my family. And I, you know, I mean, what, you know, it's been as, as hard as it is, it's also been a joy, you know, I mean, I, 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 I did a puzzle the other day with my kids. I mean, like, I don't know the last time I had time to sit and do a puzzle or play board games or, you know, cause we're always on the go. So it's just yeah. been, 
you know, yeah. quite amazing. Yeah. <laughs> really. yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. So what's the funniest thing you've did, done to your kids? Have you done anything funny to them? What have I done to them? Um, <laughs> they've done some funny things to me. We just uh -huh. put a cushion under my husband's pillow the other night and <laughs> I was just laying there giggling, waiting, <laughs> waiting for him to lay to to you know pop it it was yeah. so fun yeah you know so um i don't know we just i there's lots of you know dance parties and um you know we do each other's makeup oh we have we've had some spa nights you know things like that just yeah you know just to keep it light and yeah. i think i don't remember who wrote a, the book but um i think it was lawrence gonzalez in deep survival was talking about people who've been stuck in really horrible situations um, like being stranded in the wilderness, things like that. And they said one of the things that kept them alive during a time of crisis was humor. Yeah. And humor is actually a really good survival skill. And I love that you bring that up because I think sometimes a lot of this can feel so heavy and humor is such a great way to honestly like boost our confidence to this whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I love yeah. that you bring that up. Yes, I even, so I have, and this is sitting here, so I'm going to bring it up because it's, this is totally my sense of humor. Did you, did you see this? So this is, this is, here's Sue. Sue's 31 years old, homeschooling her kids for the last four weeks. Great job, Sue. Keep up the great work. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I, Sue. <laughs> I love oh, it. Here's my humor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right. So he, I have a couple more questions for you. I would love to know in your career, what's one of the more courageous decisions you've had to make and how did you have the confidence to do that? Well, it's staying in real estate. I mean, there's been many a times, I mean, we, you know, being self-employed is no joke. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and I've had so many times when I have been like, what am I doing? I mean, you know, we, I don't know when my, I'm selling my next house. And, um, and so, but, but just again, staying true to what I'm doing and knowing that I'm, I'm capable, I, I can do it. It's just, you know, sometimes it's hard, Yeah. And uh, you know, not being afraid of it being hard. So not going back to, to corporate to work to, for me to not go back to corporate, mm -hmm. it has been very uh, motivating. <laughs> yeah. Cause it sounds like you've made the choice. I mean, you made that yeah. choice. It sounds like in your early twenties, you're like, yeah. I'm just not going to work for anyone else. And that's almost a value in and of itself. Like it's a decision that you're standing in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for women who want to make the leap into yeah. entrepreneurship and to do their own thing, <laughs> gosh, you know, what are three pieces of advice that you would oh. give them so they can confidently make that transition? Tr I mean, trust, trust in yourself. And, you know, I think one of the most important things that's super important for all women and no matter where you are in your career, it, whether or not you're going to work for yourself or for uh, somebody else is to remember what you've already accomplished. Mm -hmm. And I have to remind myself this all the time because, you know, we're so hard on ourselves. Oh, I didn't do my to-do list that I wanted to get done today. I didn't do all these things, but I really try hard to reflect on what I did accomplish and the day before. Oh my gosh. Okay. I guess I did do a lot of stuff. I, I raised a human. I, 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 yeah. you know, helped, helped my 11 year old survive a, you know, epic meltdown about, you know, not going back to elementary school, you know, I mean, so, yeah. so yeah. I mean, and those small things, but those are real things. Those um, are big things. Yeah. Those are big things. And, um, and so I guess to answer that question, I would say, reflect back on what you have accomplished Love and, that. and think of how that can translate to, um, to what that looks like for you doing your next great thing, taking that, that next great leap, because quite honestly, you're, you're, you're probably way more equipped than you realize. The other thing that I always do is think of the people I worked for. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, really? So yeah, I could do that. <laughs> yeah. We tend to overestimate everyone else's competence and underestimate our own, which I think is a huge flaw. So I love how you're tying those two together. Cause I think sometimes we just so quickly forget all the things we accomplish unless we actually intentionally go back and say, okay, this quarter, 
Yeah. Write everything down and you're like, dang, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's yeah. so true. And, um, and I know there's always that financial piece that's, that's scary. Yeah. Um, cause, and that's so the reason why you don't do it. Right. I mean, I even remember my mom saying to me when I was first going to start my own marketing business, are you crazy? You won't have health insurance. You, and I was single at the time. I mean, now with having my husband, I mean, it, it, it obviously helps and it makes it a lot more palatable. Um, but I did it at first without that. And, um, and you know, I just took the leap. I, I'm, I'm a risk taker. A lot of people aren't. And if, and if you're not that comfortable, I mean, you know, it's kind of what I tell my home buyers that aren't sure if they want to buy, if they can buy a home is like, like set a little bit of a money aside that, that you would need to live on. I mean, if you're not already a saver, you're not already that person. So like, it's like your mortgage, like, okay, I'm going to, this is how much I pay for my rent. And this is how much more my mortgage would be. So you just set that amount aside. So now you've got it. And now you're living that way or reverse it, right? And live a little bit on, on a little bit less. And then, and then it, it just becomes less of a, of a scary p proposition, yeah. right? Like, cause you're just, you know, cause, cause I, that's, I feel like that's usually the thing. It's the money thing. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's actually a tactic that, my husband and I used when I left corporate America and I went out on my own is we just adjusted enough in our lifestyle to say, okay, you know what? I need to build some padding. And I, I, that I would never recommend unless you have an amazing safety net or win the lottery to just yeah. leap into entrepreneurship. Right. But right. I, I, what you're saying is, is be thoughtful about this. Yeah. If you're not a huge risk taker and how can you reverse engineer it? And one way is like you said, is to start living the life yes. in your bank account before you actually live the life. And yes. that's really great advice. And then it feels like it's baby steps a little yeah, bit. For yeah, for sure, for sure. And I mean, quite honestly, I mean, I always did, I always did my preparation for my entrepreneur, all my jobs while I had a job, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. I, I was taking my real estate test or uh, taking my real estate course online the morning, in the morning before I started my, my corporate job. And then I started my corporate job. So I would do it for a few hours and then, you know, and, and if you're, and if you're passionate and, and committed to what you're doing, mm -hmm. it, it'll just naturally you know, when something's right for you, I honestly believe like the universe will conspire with you to help you make it work. If you're all in, like you've yeah. chosen, like you've done a great job of telling the story. Like you weren't just gonna, I'm not gonna try being my own boss and being it. Like you're like, no, I'm all in. Oh yeah. And I think when you make right. that commitment, that energy gets put into the world and the world tends to commit around you. Yeah. So I and love not that. listening to the naysayers because there's always going to be naysayers. Always, always. So that brings me to one of my last questions. And that is, you know, what are three of your favorite confidence building practices? Like when you need just like a little bit more confidence, maybe to go into a tough negotiation or have a right. courageous conversation or to do something big and new, whether it's like selling your biggest property ever or right. starting this coaching group, talk to me about what practices or what advice would you give to women to keep confident yeah. in those moments? One of the things I do is, and this is, me being goofy is you do the Wonder Woman stance. Oh yes, yes, the Amy Cuddy presence yeah. power posing. Uh -huh, yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. yeah. So if you if I ever feel like I'm particularly like going into a meeting, a uh, listing presentation, buyer's presentation with that that power person or that person that kind of initially makes me feel intimidated, I definitely do that and you, and I stand there like that. And it helps. It's so weird. Does it, uh, how does it help you? Does it put you in a different feeling state? Yeah. It, it, it opens you up. It makes you feel like, like, Oh, I got this. Like it, it's, it's such a, it's a, a power stance and it just brings my, my, uh, energy level up to that positive quadrant of just being like, you know, I I've got this for sure. Um, and, and just my daily practice, affirmations, um, my goal cards, you know, just, um, I have a lot of self-talk going on. <laughs> Good self-talk. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Every time I 
I, I have that bad self-talk. I, I definitely have my mantras and the things that I do to, um, to switch that, to switch that inner, inner demon. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love, yeah. I call it my inner critic and I think it's so important. And one of the things I coach my clients on is it's not about, um, arguing with the thought per se. It's just, how do I replace it with something that's more true? Yeah. And one of my favorite tricks is just to practice its opposite. So yeah. I'm saying something like, oh, people are going to think this is stupid. I don't know if I should put this program out there, which is my number one inner critic thought. I, you know, and clients have them too, right? I just switch it. Okay. Well, how could the opposite also be true? Yes. Wow. People might think that this is helpful. Yes. And just like you said, can I draw on my past experiences that help me show that that's true? Like have people ever found my programs helpful? Well, yeah. they have. <laughs> So well, they have. Helpful. So I love the reframe. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I uh, read a book called uh, Useful Belief. Ooh. Um, I can't. I can't remember the author right now. I think anyway. Um, and that is has been super helpful because everything that that's that you can look at in a negative way, you can always switch it around to be a, u a useful belief. How is this going to be useful? That meeting you don't want to go to. Well, what am I going to get out of this? You know what? You know. Oh. I, I definitely try to switch, switch that, that around into a useful belief for myself. So, um, yeah, I have, um, people I listen to on, you know, um, the podcasts that I listen to, um, one of my favorites, um, Kathy Heller is, uh, quit, don't quit. No, don't quit your day job. No, don't keep your day job. <laughs> And she's all about entrepreneurs and, and I just, I find so much inspiration from other people that have gone through it and done it. And so, um, yeah, I've, I've, I've my little tricks of the trade, right? I'm yeah. To, I love it. So yeah. what, um, cause I know you read and now you listen to podcasts. So, uh, what, what are, what's your, what's your favorite book right now? And then besides Kathy's any other favorite podcasts? Um, I love Jenna Kutcher's, um, and, um, uh, crap. <laughs> I'm thinking on the ones. <laughs> it'll come uh, to you when we. Yes, it'll come this. to me the second that we, we stop talking. <laughs> yes, yes, always, always. Always, always. Any other fun facts that people should know about you? About me? Hmm. Um, love. I just love having fun and I love connecting with people and, and helping people and, you know, laughing. Oh, I just said all my core values right there. Oh, Isn't that funny? Oh. Yes. <laughs> and you are also I'm... planning to do, and I know this cause you and I talked before this, but you yeah. are so in training to run. Oh, my coaching business. Yes. Oh my, no, my triathlon. Yes. Or my, yes. yes triathlon. <laughs> I guess that is a, I guess that is a fun fact. I'm training. Yeah. For my, uh, for my, a half Ironman triathlon in September. Now it's been moved to September. Thank goodness. Cause gosh, it was supposed to be the end of June. I'm like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know. And it all got yeah. pushed back, but I yeah. love this. I love that. Like you live your life aligned with your values, bringing in humor, bringing in movement, you know, yeah. um, yeah. Because when you can really anchor down to some of those things, I mean, there is so much science that shows that living by your values, bringing in humor and moving your body are just like simple ingredients, not only to keep us confident, but to keep us motivated, yeah. to keep us resilient and to keep us happy. And yes. you can do it anywhere. I like, know. At any time. So I just love that you have all three of these factors in your life. And I, I think that that's yeah. really motivating for folks. Yes. So, I live in a beautiful so, area. And this, like, as you can, this is my backyard. Mind you. Yeah. <laughs> like, how lucky am I? So. <laughs> so tell us about Mama's Real Estate Academy. Yeah. And then I want you to tell folks who are interested just in following your journey. Because I always think it was hard for me to imagine life as an entrepreneur until I saw entrepreneurs. Yeah, I want you to tell people where they can find you and then about your mama's real estate academy. If, you know, especially if they think real estate is something they want to get into. So yeah. Yeah, say more about that. Um, well, so I have, um, my, my real estate website is Denise Perkins homes. Um, and I have a business, a Facebook business page, Denise Perkins. And also, um, 
my mama's real estate academy i have a really great um interactive facebook group um uh, mama's real estate academy and um I, I would love more mamas not or not mamas you don't have to be a mama they're, the the stories are still the same. <laughs> One, there it's just people who desire to make yes. the leap into real estate, and I love yeah. it. I think it all circles back to the comment you made at the beginning, where if you're gonna go out on your own, your squad, your partner, your support network is so important. Yeah. So I love how you you built that for people. Yeah, and it's such a great. It, I feel very passionate about that. We're all in this together. There's no competition. I mean, there's enough business for everybody, and it's the yes. best way is to support each other. And um, and how else do we better ourselves if we're not sharing stories and talking about how we can help and serve serve others? And and that's kind of what you know where this group has come from. Um, and we share stories and we share inspiration and, you know, help, help us pick ourselves back up, you know, when it's been a tough day or you've had a hard client to deal with and things like that. So that's a lot of what this group is, is about a community for that. So love that. Yeah. We close out. What's maybe a final thought or something I haven't asked you, what advice would you give women right now who are moms, who yeah. have careers, who are juggling all of the kids? Yeah. <laughs> just like you are, what's yeah. one tip or a thought you'd leave them with so they can move this time with a little more confidence? Um, probably just to trust that, trust and believe, you know, trust it's going to be, it's, it's hard, but it's not defining us. It's not, it's not going to change who we are inside and um, what we have to offer. Um, and yeah, that it's, um, you know, I mean, just all of the cliched sayings, you know, we're in this together, but it's, it's true. I mean, it, it's, it's a, it's a blip, right? It feels really heavy. It's, we've never been through anything like this before. Um, and just, you know, kind of hug your babies and, and enjoy, and enjoy what we have, but give yourself some grace and go for a walk. <laughs> I love it. Give yourself some grace, go for a walk, and while you're at it, find something to laugh at. <laughs> yes, please. Go watch the comedy. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. I love it. Yes, we've been enjoying some good news with John Krasinski. We've, we've oh my gosh, I love that. It's, he's so stinking cute. He is. I love it. I was um, watching a lip, lip sync battle the other night. It is so good. So yeah. good. Denise, thank you so much for taking the time. Yes. I hope women who um, you know are in a corporate career right now who might be thinking about going out on their own can see that you can do it. You can have a family. You can run your own thing. And there's, there's lots of support out there for you. So thank you for all your wisdom. And thank you for joining me.